without further ado, uh, Grace Multicultural, they help corporations build authentic relationships with the U.S. multicultural communities through content creation, community outreach, workforce development, digital media, social media, print advertising at events. And we're so pleased to have her here, very active here in the cities uh, on the board of the Latino Chamber of Commerce here. So without further ado, Anita Grace. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Rick, for having me here. Um, so yes, talking about the power of print in your multicultural media mix. Uh, print is one of the traditional advertising mediums. I know especially today in a digital age, um, a lot of you might wonder, is print still alive? You'll hear things like that. Um, or do I even need print because everything is online? And the answer is yes, print is still alive. Um, Rick, actually, I'm not sure if everybody knows, is a publisher as well, has his own um, publication. Um, and so, and all of you are here today, right? So let's talk about it. Okay, so first just, why, do I know what I'm talking about? Why am I here today? So just a quick um, overview of, of my print world is uh, graduating out of college, I was hired to launch TV Emos and Lavo's newspapers in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, now they're the top Spanish language publications there. So that was my beginning of the print world. I, I went independent in 2008, and then I started taking on more publications. I realized that what I was doing was something that was niche and that not all publishers had. So I started taking on uh, Vida Nel Valle, that's in, in California. Abasto is national. Aldea is in Texas. I know we have uh, uh, Dallas people here. Um, which led me to 2012, and, and today I now represent the entire print industry, um, Spanish language publications. I work with the, uh, the black uh, publications as well, so that's the National Association of Hispanic Publications, or Hispanic Publishers. So I sit on a national level in Washington, D.C., and in the top markets where there are corporations that are looking to reach our communities. I work very closely with the NNPA, which is the National Newspaper Publisher Association for the Black uh, Publishers around the nation. Um, and so now today I'm working with clients like the, the RNC and Biden for President here in Minnesota, the Minnesota Department of Transportation. And like Rick said, um, I'm on the board of directors of the Latino Chamber of Commerce. So the print world, I live it. I've walked the streets. I've knocked on doors. I've sold to tiny dulcerias and I've worked with a large campaign. So. I see the results that print can have. And so just kind of taking a step back here, this is a lot of things that I think people don't realize, but when you make it into the paper, you see people talking about it, you see them displaying it proudly, you see it framed when you go into restaurants, you see people coming to the uh, publisher to pick up the copies because their kids made the paper. So making the paper, making it into print is something that is of a high regard. It's something that holds value. And people need to remember that in their advertising and media campaigns. There's a reason why there's public relations firms who are paid to try to get you into the print publications. So here's another one, actually. This is my friend. She put the print on her social media. So it's not just a print publication. It's also digital as well. So this is just something from my own community. And you can see she had 23 engagements by the time I got to the post. I was making my presentation. I thought, oh, perfect. I'll take this one. But that was from our local newspaper. Um, and that was a post on social media. And so why is print something that you want to put in your marketing mix. Just like we all know Rick here today, the print publications and the print publishers are connected to the community. So you want to put your message in there because the chambers of commerce are there. Probably their businesses, their members are working with the publisher. Local merchants, local politicians, school principals, community organizations, all are connected to that publisher. Publishers are a part of their local community, especially in multicultural. There's not very many national publications. The majority of them are community publications. And the publishers live and connect with their community every day and are a trusted source of information at that ground level. And so that's why community newspapers, community publications are powerful. It's powerful in getting that grassroots message out. 
to the community. And not everybody is always connected all the time. We don't always all want to be online all the time because then it can become traffic and noise where it's coming at you and you're dodging it, you're dodging it. With a print publication, it's not standing in the way of your information. It's there and your guard is down. Your guard is down and you're more engaged. You're spending more time with that message. You're unplugged, you're relaxed, and you're ready to receive information. So that is what makes print different than the other mediums that we're used to. You'll see later in, in the presentation that everything has a place, just like Isaac had said. There's a media mix for the most successful campaigns, and print definitely plays a role. Another thing that makes print so powerful is the publishers are out advocating uh, for issues. Um, in the NAHP, we are in Washington, D.C., very often talking about issues that um, impact our communities, that impact our industry, and that impact us as business owners um, and the people that read it. And so uh, community outreach is another thing. Publishers uh, help you play where your customers are playing. Actually, this morning I stopped at the Dulceria down the street. I grabbed La Matraca and Vida y Sabor to bring here. I have some examples of, the, of publications from across the nation on the back table, but the Dulceria allows distribution in their store because they know people are going to do what I did. Well, what did I do? I went to get a publication, but I walked out with a box of pan dulce. <laughs> right? So it goes both ways. That's why they do that. And then, of course, advertising. Your local publication not only can put your ad out there, but we're consultants. We can help you create your media plan. We see how advertising impacts businesses every single day. I've been in the back rooms of, I've been in the, in the um, living room holding the baby while the painter that advertises with me writes me a check. I've been in the back room of someone who opens up a T-Mobile store. I've been with cash exchanges. And you see these people every day, especially when you're a local. You visit your clients every week. They tell you how good they did or if they didn't do very well. You go to the car lot. You know which salesmen are doing great or saleswomen are doing great. And so you really get to know your community. And so your local publication can help you create these plans with a 360 degree platform extension. We are not just the, the, the printed medium anymore. And so in marketing, there's co something called the marketing rule of seven. This means that on average, someone needs to be exposed to your message seven times before they take action. And that's when Isaac was saying, thinking of Isaac, right? You want them to be exposed to you enough times where you come to mind when the need is there. Because when they see your advertisement, the need might not always be there at that moment which is why you need to have consistency in your advertising and why you need to have multi-platform in your advertising so that when the need is there, you come to mind and, and you're there in some point of, um, in some way. This is where multiple touch points comes in. Print publications and publishers today are more than just print. We have to be. So we have websites, we have mobile, we have, you know, of course, tab, desktop, tab. Um, we have online. We have social media. And so the publication or the print medium is with the reader throughout the day, every day, through these different touch points. You can also add email to that. You can add content to that. You can add events to that. And then in other mediums, such as, you know, television. We have Telemundo here today. Um, so having that multiple touch points for your audience is going to make you there when they need you and you're going to come to mind when they're looking for that service. So we know that a lot of consumers are bilingual today um, in the United States, um, but why is advertising in language or um, in, within a cultural medium important? There's something called the cultural halo effect, which means that consumers trust your brand and are appreciative of your brand when you are sensitive to their culture or when you play where we play. In some of the work that I'm now starting to do in, in the state of Minnesota, they'll say to me, we don't have multiculturals. We don't know how to reach them. Can you help us? And I'll say, well, where are you putting your message? Well, in the same place we've always put it. And it's almost always just in English. And so I'm, well, if you want our business, you need to come hang out where we hang out. To us, this is normal, right? I'm from Phoenix and from LA. Where I'm from, 
30% or more of the population is Hispanic or is Latino. Here, it's a little bit different. So what I feel like is normal where I'm from, a lot of people here don't know that, that work for the larger corporations in the states. They haven't, that's not their everyday life. So just some of the, some of the stats here, advertising to Hispanics in Spanish is more effective in increasing awareness. It's more effective in increasing message comprehension. It's more persuasive than commercials in English, and here's why. I'm Latina, my family is from Huaymas, uh, from Mexico, but my first language is English. I do speak Spanish and I'm fully fluent in Spanish, but on my off time, my comfort zone is English. So it's the same way, other way around, for many, many Americans. So I might live my life in English, some of my readers, but when they go home, and you, if you want to speak to their heart, you're going to speak in language. You're going to speak in Spanish. Now, some of them, some of them are like me, but other them are, are like my tias and my tios and my abuelos, where their comfort zone is in Spanish. So you're going to get your message. You're going to connect to their heart by speaking in language, or if it's Asian, you know, by speaking in Asia, by speaking in Hmong, by speaking in Somali, by being in an African American-owned publication or radio station, be where it's culturally relevant. So I just wanted to address for a second here, because this is something that our industry has combated. We've gone to Washington, D.C. many times. And so this is just a snip of, uh, of a video that we made for one of our most recent Washington trips. But um, I just want to address, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of doubt out there about the media now, um, about that word fake news is a buzzword. And so I'm just going to play you just a short snippet of some of this video. Um, some, there is some fake news out there but it's not the majority of publishers. The majority of publishers are out there researching their community and making sure that what they offer is truthful information because, especially community publishers, because otherwise the community is not gonna trust them. And so let me see if I can get this video to play here. The difference between a blogger, actually I want to go back here. The difference between a blogger or something that you can see online or social media um, is that uh, with a publisher you have an editor, you have journalists, you have research, you have things that are going to be put in paper. So you can trust your local media. You can trust your local newspaper. Rick's not going to intentionally print something that he believes is completely untrue because he wants you to believe what he believes. So the, the community newspapers and the community publications and the community media, which is what, what I'm here to represent and talk about, don't want to lose the trust of their readers. And they want to present a, a, a neutral platform. And so the way we keep that trust and the way we keep that connection is by making sure that what we print is true. And so engage with your community publication. The community is engaging with the publication. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in business. There's over 300 Spanish language publishers across the nation, and there's over 250 African American publishers across the nation. So between those two, that's nearly 30% of the multicultural population in the United States. These people would not be in business if people weren't reading their publication or if people weren't advertising in their publication. And so just to kind of give that, that large view, which is a lot of the work that we do in Washington together, um, it's, not, uh, it's not a dying medium and it's not fake news. It's still here and it's alive and it's working for businesses. And so I just kind of wanted to go over a few of the ideas of advertising options because a lot of times I will meet an, 
someone that works for an advertising agency or a media buyer and they're not sure how to buy print. Um, everybody is, uh, in, especially with the millennials which are w that are working at the agencies, they're not savvy in how to buy print. And so here's your advertising options. And also too, so if you call and you want to put together something for your own business that you kind of have an idea of what you want to look for, or what you want to ask for. So this is what we, you know, this is a sheet from a publication. This is a, um, an ad campaign that I ran last year, or gosh, a couple years ago. But this is called a traditional display ad. This is gonna be a full page ad, a half page ad, a quarter page ad. So this you want to use more for branding and then try to include a call to action. Um, your, your brand does not always have to be at the top. It doesn't always have to be a tagline. You want your message to be first. I think probably 10 or 20 years ago, people thought that you would put who it was from in the headline and that that's what people wanted to see. It's not. They want to see the message or what you're looking for from them. So when you build your ad, you want to make sure that call to action is at the top. Okay? And then the brand can be at the bottom. It doesn't even have to be as visible. At the top here we have, um, or actually I'll do it on the next slide, but this is a traditional display ad. This is going to run in the main part of the newspaper um, and it can be used for branding and product advertising. We also have inserts, you know, where you're shopping from the Sunday paper, you pull out the Target insert. A lot of grocery stores love inserts, okay? So this is where you can put a lot of pricing, um, a lot of items on there. And for the larger corporations that have inserts, sometimes I'll go to them and they'll say, oh, well, we plan these months in advance. I, it's three to six months in advance because they have to get them all printed and then the, once they're printed, they got to get them shipped to the paper and then the paper needs time to insert them. And so they don't always have time to translate them. And if so, if you're a marketer and you're here from, from a corporation like that, an insert is one of the things that I would say would be okay to be in English and put it in a Spanish language publication and here's why because you don't translate the title of a product and a price is a price. Numbers are the same. So you can see over here, you know that that is a piece of meat and that it's $1.49. You know that though that's fried chicken and that it's $5.99. So there's enough price points, enough titles of things and enough pictures and in inserts most of the time that they're going to know what they're looking for. So if you're encouraging someone to start an insert program, um, and they don't have it available in language yet, that's fine, we can get there. But in this particular case, putting it in English in a Spanish language publication or a Hmong or Somali publication, your message will still get across. Um, then there's classified advertising. This is probably one of the most affordable print mediums. It's used a lot for recruiting pers and personal ads such as garage sales. And so um, this is called a liner ad, what you're seeing. Uh, that's called a classified liner ad. There are display ads in the classifieds um, as well, but liner ads is, is what is mostly used for. Then we get to online and social media. You want to have, uh, like we said, multiple touch points. And this is where the media platform can be very helpful to you. So you're living in the print world with your display ad. You're getting that tangible engagement. They can feel your ad. They can spend time with your ad. But you also want to be with the reader throughout the day, every day. So then you take advantage of the online platforms that the publisher has. So this is a snippet from the Washington DC El Tiempo Latino. Um, very high engagement uh, on their platform. And so they can do um, posts for you. They can do uh, what's called a handshake ad where their brand shakes hands with your brand online. Um, they can do a content marketing ad uh, where they write about you, um, an article. Um, and then, this, uh, and then the, the online campaign you can see here, best mattress brands. So this is mattress firm um, advertising here. So make sure you hit those multiple touch points. But again, you gotta be short with this. Attention online is very, it's, it's short. So your ad needs to be read in a blink of an eye. And so keep it very simple. They need to be able to read it very quickly because they call it traffic for a reason. You're online and these ads are coming at you, right? It's like you're driving down the road. So, on, actually I will say, so online you wanna go for quantity. 
you're going to get high numbers. You'll get millions of impressions or hundreds of thousands of impressions, where in print, it's more of the quality. It's less impressions, but more time spent with that ad. Okay, so I meant to put content marketing in here, so I'm going to go over that really quickly. But um, content marketing or native advertising was another buzzword that came here a while ago. That is basically where your ad looks like editorial or it's advertorial, it used to be called in the past, but this is where they're, they're, they'll write about you. The publication will do it for you or you can do it and they'll have to review it. But when you do a content marketing piece, this is where you take the time to educate your reader. If you want to tell them the history of your brand and that it's a family brand and, and, you know, and, and how the brand was built and now what you're doing and what you're going to do in the future, that's more of a story. So you want to, um, when you're writing that, it needs to be written in such a way where you're giving the reader a piece of information that is useful to their everyday lives. Something that is going to help them address a pain that they have or help them reach a goal. Or if you are addressing a pain, make sure you tell them how to fix it. But you want to give them content that will help their everyday lives and then, oh hey, by the way, this is brought to you by Keller Williams. Oh, hey, by the way, this is brought to you by, because again, it's the same thing in the brand advertising. You don't want to tell them Kelly, Keller Williams is amazing. You should buy from us. And then here's all the information. They're not going to care. But if you tell them, here's how you get the best rate on your home loan, then teach them how to do that or ways to talk to that loan officer, then they'll be thankful that it comes from Keller Williams. Right? So when you do a content marketing piece, just make sure that you're addressing uh, information that will be useful to their everyday lives. And so again, this last slide, just to remind you, um, and this is only the Hispanic, but this is like this in, in many cultures, right? There are over 300 Spanish language publishers that have print, digital, social media, events. There's over 250 African American publishers that have print, digital, social media events. In the, in the multicultural Spanish language world, there's over 50 million impressions per month just with the people that I work with in print and digital and social media and events. And over 50 million in the African American as well. Hmong in Somali or Asian Pacific Islander will probably be slightly less, but still a, a large amount. And so you can also tap into those, even if you're a small business and you can't afford a national campaign, you can also buy digital from these local community publishers, um, geo-targeting, which is basically picking the area that you want to advertise in. And you can even go deeper by choosing demographics or behavioral when you're doing online. So start online if you have a small budget. You can still get into that community publisher circle of influence by buying by the, by the thousands of impressions. Um, and so you can target platforms like this and like the other ones that I spoke about and not have to be able to afford a, a, a million dollar advertising campaign. So you can start small on digital and you can show up on the cell phones. Um, but then um, when you get to a larger level, if you want to go national, um, they're there for, with their other options as well. So um, if anyone has any questions, um, yeah. You know, Anita, on the, uh, you know, a couple of particulars about print that I've learned uh, being in the business 10 years, I, I actually bought a newspaper that was an existing newspaper for a friend of mine. But, I, but here's what I've, what I've learned. You know, being collective, I mean, you were talking about the, uh, Isaac, about uh, Latino homeowners. You know, when you get that newspaper home, it's amazing how many people are gonna read that. Mm -hmm. It's there in the house. You, you could probably have anywhere from 15 to 20 different people reading that. So it's not something where, in a lot of the general market, it's a single family home. And, and, uh, and, and as far as, uh, as, as distribution, for instance, we have, a, we have a four news racks at uh, Mercado Central, which is our, our uh, shopping center, if you will, for Latinos in, in the community. By us having four newspaper racks there, you're getting shoppers from the whole Twin City metro area coming to that store and taking it. We do about 6,000 papers a month there, just at that location, yeah. that are going throughout the metro area. And we figure that when that person grabs that paper and takes it home to his family, 
and there's 20, 20 people or more reading that, look at the amount of information you're getting out, and it's so reasonable. Uh, I, I've spoken to other, uh, well, let, let's take for instance, something, somebody in the political world, and, I, and I've said this, if you're reaching out, let's say for instance they're reaching out to the Hmong community, which a lot of candidates do, well, they will be there at an event which is an important event. Maybe the elders are there, important leaders, and everybody's taking a photo, but yet there's no follow-up to the media. Yes, 200 people knew you were there, but if it's not going into the print, if it's not going uh, online, you know, you're going to miss out on 80,000 monks knowing you were there, you were received gratefully, uh, the, your message went over well. So we have to learn that here in the cities as we, as you look at these multicultural communities, that, you know, these medias are not only uh, uh, successful in terms of you getting out there, but it's reasonable. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's so reasonable. But so I wanted to ask you this, as you see our coming out of the pandemic, you know, where, where is our media platform, if you will, here in the cities? I know that a lot of the papers have disappeared. You know, thank goodness we're still hanging. Uh, but but how, how, are, how is our platform now looking as we enter, you know, the political season or the new world after the pandemic? Maybe you can give us a little lowdown on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and just to circle back quickly on, on what you had said too is, Yes, when a print publication enters the home, I mean, we talked about the multiple generations that are living in the household, and multicultural households have more people per household than a, non, than a general market household, and so that publication is reaching all of those people as well. And um, when it comes to politics, I just met last week with a national organization that uh, educates about voter rights and voter registration, and you know what they wanted to meet with us about? They want their people who knock on doors to show up at the door with one of our publications because they know that that will get them an in or a, a, a way to earn their trust. And so um, here in the Twin Cities, actually the, the multicultural media um, community is more impressive than I had expected because to me, I mean, I, coming from LA and Phoenix, those are top 10 multi or Hispanic markets. I think this market's number 28 or number 30. And so to, it feels like our community here is smaller than from where I come from. But working on some of these projects with the state, like with MnDOT right now, um, I've had to reach out to and connect and build relationships. And there are many, many multicultural publishers here and publications here, um, I would say there's at least 15, at least. Um, just in the Hispanic community, you have Rick's Latino American Today, there's uh, St. Paul La Voz Latina, there's La Matraca, which is a publication that I have back there, there's Vida y Sabor, um, and um, there's, there's a few more as well. And then you have um, Insight News, you know, there's African American publications, but there's also radio stations and TV stations, um, Hmong, Hmong, uh, 3TV in the Hmong community, their engagement probably for a community publisher is one of the largest I've seen in all of my work across the nation. And so um, here we do have a good, we have a good um, community. There's Asian media access. Um, and so they'll help you get into the Asian community. But just like the work I do with the NAHP, there are um, people here that do stuff like that. Rick, I know you're part of a consortium that will get people to all the different mediums. And so you don't have to know all the Asian, all the Hmong, all the Somali, all the African American, all the Hispanic publishers. That can seem overwhelming. That's why there's like people like Rick's consortium or people like me who we do know them and we know what they're looking for uh, to make their business successful and to make your business successful. And so yeah, circling back Quickly, I don't want, I know I'm getting close to the end of my time, but another thing that has become popular is just trying to get what they call earned media. And I'm going to tell you that drives the publications crazy because to us, earned media means I want to somehow, somehow get your work for me for free. Yeah. <laughs> and what did you do to earn it? That's what we think. When someone says earned media, I'm like, how? How did you earn it? I don't have a you know, so if you really want the support of the publisher and you want them to support your business and you want to be more than just a flat ad and you want them to really advocate or make a social media post or write an article, you need to support their business. So when the corporations come to us on the national level and they say, oh, 
Oh, here's another one. We've got all this great content. I could give you so much great, great content. It's so good. You really are going to want it. Well, guess what? There's at least 300 other people who think that their content's great as well. And they're also trying to get my work for free, which is writing the paper, putting the paper together, printing the paper, distributing the paper, and making sure that it's in a place where it gets high pickup rates. And so you want to have, you need to have a paid relationship if you're a brand and you want complete engagement from the publisher. If you want to support, if you want them to support your business, you need to also support the work that they're doing, which is why media was an essential, I, I don't, an essential form of, of working when we had the last pandemic, because you can't get information out to the community if they're not, if they can't afford to do it. And so don't just go send a PR firm. Don't just try to send a press release. If you really want to guarantee that you'll make it into the publication or on the platform, you need to somehow be also supporting their business as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any, yes. more, any more questions? Oh, we have a question. Oh, yeah, Ray, Ray, sure. Recently, real quickly, uh, great conversation. How about your measurement systems? How do you help uh, your advertisers to really get the, the numbers behind uh, you know, behind the distribution and the impact it has in the business. Do you have measurement systems? Yes. So with the publication, you'll measure by the number of copies that they print and that they put out because we have something that's called a pickup rate. And so while it's not online data and statistics, which right now people think that that is the golden nugget, that that's going to get them what they want, it gives them something to bring to a meeting, but <clears throat> there's ways that that well, let me back up for a second. So with a print publication, you want to know how many copies they put on the streets. And you also want to know of those copies they put out, how many get picked up. So the majority of publishers are going to have a liquid distribution. Rick knows that he moves 6,000 copies a month in Mercado Central. But if he goes back and there's 200 copies left at the end of the month, the next time he's going to go, well, Burrito Mercado ran out early. So I'm going to take 200 copies from Mercado Central. I'm going to move them over to Burrito Mercado because if their publications aren't getting picked up, then their advertisers aren't getting response. If their advertisers aren't getting response, then they can't afford to put the news out. And so you want to go by number of copies. And in the multicultural community, it's on, av it's, it's on average, on a national average, um, about two and a half readers per copy. And that's just bringing them into the household and having those multiple users. But then when it comes to online, so that's your print one, which is also, it's a little harder to, to measure. Um, and sometimes advertisers feel like they might not be getting what they need, especially if they're not asking where you found them from um, when, when you approach them. But you're going to want to know number of copies and what their pickup rate is. And then with online, you can get those stats. Those are easily, but here's the thing I'm going to say, watch out for online because just because you have an online video that runs and someone tells you it got a million views, that doesn't mean it was complete views. Someone could watch it for five seconds and that counts as a view. And so it's not a perfect science, not in print, which gets a harder time than digital because digital can spit out these reports, but those digital reports are can also be fudged. So that's why you need to have the, the overall media mix. And you need to be actually tracking where you got your leads from. Make sure you say, hey, how did you hear about me? So that you too know, because a lot of people will run ads and not know where their feedback came from. Did that answer your question? Yes. Yeah, so maybe just to drill down one further level, you get feedback from the advertisers on the, on the sales they've gotten for their services or products based on, your, on, on their positioning in your publications. So do you get feedback from that? Oh, do you get feedback? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Especially a local publication. They'll be visiting their advertisers and they'll find out. I mean, I would walk onto a car lot and they would say, oh, I got 300 calls this week. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Or the cell phone. Yep, absolutely. That's what the community ones come in handy. Yeah. One more. Quick question: uh, With multiple uh, advertisers or multiple people such as yourselves, what's what keys do you look for to determine which would be the most approach, appropriate to use? Which approach? Because you all do to the uninformed, you all look the same. Right. So how do you decide which medium to use? Is that yes. what you're saying? Uh, well, which not necessarily which medium, but which person to go with, or how do you interview and figure out which would be yeah. the uh, which, which. appropriate company sure. or firm to go with. Yeah. From the publisher point of view, like when we go find advertisers, well, or from the advertiser point of view? Right. No, from the business person's point of oh, view. Oh, got it. If you were, you mentioned it's important to pay the person. Okay, so then you have the companies, you have 
X number of companies. So where do you start? How do you determine which no. company would be most appropriate for your own business? Got it. No. So in the online, and yeah, yeah. In the online world, you're going to want to make sure you scope out their social media pages, right? Likes and follows and views and comments and engagement. Um, and then if you have a digital person, you'll, you'll want to find out or ask them how many impressions they get per month on their website. Okay, if it's a newsletter, you want to find out what their click-through rate is. That's like people actually wanting to know more, like clicking on the ad. And with a publication, if you look at the publication and they have a good mix of national and local advertisers, then you're going to know that that's a publication that actually gets results, especially ones that have um, that have that good mix. Because if they're only local, um, they might not have the clout across the nation. Or, or if they're only national, they might not get the results here. But you definitely want to go out, you want to look at it yourself, and then ask the smart questions. I mean, ask what their pickup rate is. Ask how many copies they put out per month. You know, follow them on their social media and ask them how many impressions they get per month. And also you can find the publisher on LinkedIn too. I mean, Rick, er, he's always on there. Um, I can tell he's connected just by his profile. Thank yeah. You. All right, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Nia, and uh,